Hello and welcome to today's episode which deals with TV production, its systems, its various stages, the many production elements and processes. As we go along, we will realize that the several production tools and elements are so interdependent on each other that a specialization in one particular area cannot be very successful without the knowledge of the other elements. A cameraman who understands the principles of direction and of editing will deliver better results than a cameraman who has no familiarity with the other elements of filmmaking. I am Sudhir Tandon. Starting my career as a cameraman in Doordarshan, I retired as its Deputy Director General. Today, we will take a broad overview of the television production system. Whether the productions are simple or complex or take place in a studio or on location, the basic principle remains the same. The TV camera converts optical images into electrical signals. Similarly, the microphone converts sounds into electrical signals. These signals can be stored on tape or transmitted live to TV sets for direct reconversion into screen images and sounds respectively. The picture signals are called video signals. The sound signals are called audio signals. Before we discuss the TV production process, let us understand who does what and why in the various stages of production. Have you noticed the lengthy credit lists for major films and TV programs? The person in charge of launching the entire production is the producer. He or she comes up with the program concept, arranges the budget for the production and takes all the major decisions. This person is the team leader, the one who works with the writers who hires the director, decides on the main talent and guides the general direction of the production. In the in-house productions of film studios and TV channels, a producer who is an employee of the company performs all the roles of an independent or a freelance producer except raise finance for the project. The required budget is provided to him or to her by the concerned studio or TV channel. In smaller productions, the producer may also handle the more routine activities. And in small productions, the producer takes charge of the director's responsibilities. In this case, the combined job title becomes, do you want to guess? Yes, producer, director. In a major production, one of the producer's first jobs is to engage a writer to write the script. The script is like a written plan or a blueprint for the production. The producer will next consider the key talent for the production. In general, the talent includes actors, reporters, anchors, guests and off-camera narrators. Anyone whose voice is heard or who appears on camera, like me for example. In a large production or a feature film, the producer will hire the director. The director is in charge of working out pre-production details, that is, anything which has to do before the production, coordinating the activities of the production staff and talent, working out the camera and talent positions on the set, selecting the camera shots during production, and supervising post-production work. Post-production means after the production is over. In other words, once the producer sets things in motion, the director is in charge of taking the script from the beginning to the very end of the production process. Assisting a director in the control room is typically a technical director who also operates the video switcher. The technical director or TD in short, is also responsible for coordinating the technical aspects of the production. 
one or more production assistants, that means PAs, may be hired to help the producer and the director. Among other things, PAs keep notes on ongoing production needs and changes. DOP or the director of photography is the cinematographer who supervises the photography of the entire film or big TV productions. Camera persons operate the cameras. They often do the lighting also for smaller productions. Because they work in video, they are also called videographers. The lighting director designs the lighting plan, arranges for the lighting equipment, and sets up and checks the lighting. Some productions have a set designer who, along with the producer and director, designs the set and supervises its construction, painting, and decoration. The costume designer designs and sometimes even constructs various costumes for films. TV dramas, dance numbers, variety and children's shows, etc., etc. Major dramatic productions have a wardrobe person who sees that the actors have clothes appropriate to the story and script. The sound recordist or audio technician arranges for the audio recording equipment, sets up and checks microphones monitors audio quality during the production. The microphone boom operator watches rehearsals and decides on the proper mics and their placement for each scene. The video recorder operator arranges video recording equipment and accessories, sets up video recordings, performs recording checks and monitors video quality. Video recordist is not required for small productions or new shoots as the video recorder is built into the camera and it is the camera person who becomes responsible for the video quality. In dramatic productions, the continuity man or assistant director carefully makes notes of scene and continuity details like props, makeup, costume, talent's position, his direction of looking, his movement and action, etc. as each shot is taken. This is necessary to ensure that these details remain consistent among takes and scenes. Otherwise, continuity between shots will be broken with the result. The audience will perceive a jerk, wondering what is amiss, what's wrong. In the previous shot, I was wearing a sweater. Now I am not. You see, if I had shown you removing my pullover, you would not have felt the continuity jerk. This is what is meant by maintaining continuity. The graphic designer or character generator operator designs and types in opening titles, subtitles and closing credits into a computer-based device that inserts the text over the video. She or he designs the other graphics in the production. The location manager finds and manages film locations. Most pictures are shot in the controlled environment of a sound studio stage, like this recording itself, but occasionally outdoor sequences call for filming on location. The production manager manages the production budget and production schedule of the film or TV production. Depending on the production, there may be a flow manager who is responsible for coordinating activities on the set. One or more floor persons may assist him or her on a big production. The makeup artist and the hair designer work closely with the costume designer to create a certain look for a character. The property manager maintains and manages the use of various sets and properties. 
she or he is found in large productions only. Otherwise, the props are managed by the floor manager. After the shooting is completed, the editors use the video and audio recordings to blend the segments together. Technicians add music and audio effects to create the final product. The importance of editing to the success of a production is far greater than most people realize. An editor can make or break a production. That was a brief description of the important members of the production team and the work that they do. The production process is usually divided into three main stages. However, I add two additional stages so that there is a better and a fuller understanding of the whole production process of TV program and filmmaking. Development is the first step, especially for a film or a complex TV production. It can be one of the longest phases of a project. Producers are often responsible for coming up with the underlying premise or the basic idea of a production, developing it with a writer into a story and a screenplay or for adapting a literary work or for selecting a ready-made screenplay. Producers secure the necessary rights, select the screenwriter and story editing team, raise the development finance and supervise the development process. In this stage, all the attention is devoted to this particular aspect. As such, other activities that form part of the pre-production stage are not focused upon in this phase. Many times, producers launch their projects without adequate preparation or being sure of their objective, the unique selling proposition or the USP, the artistic, technical or the commercial merits of their projects or the marketing strategies for their production. For routine or small TV productions, there is no separate development stage. As the preparatory work and planning needed for it are not that time consuming or even that complex, these are accomplished in the pre-production stage itself. Hence, the development or the pre-production stage starts with an idea, a query, a memory, an incident, even with a short or archival material that you may have with you. Or it can start with a brief given to the producer by a client or the commissioning agency. Research on the subject is required so that different aspects of the subject are understood for a treatment or script to be written. This research will also help in deciding the format of the production. Will the subject work better as a film, a TV serial, or a documentary. While developing the subject, its visual potential must be evaluated. The producer should consider not only whether one subject has more visual potential, but also how that potential can be maximized. Does the script resemble that of another program or film? Are there any scenes in it that might be extremely difficult to shoot or are there any locations where shooting may not be possible at all? What will be the cost of the project and how long will it take to complete it? Will it make a profit? Is there anything in it that might offend the cultural or moral sensibility of the audience? These are some of the questions that a producer will consider to assess the viability of a project before finalizing it. In order to arrange finance for the project, producer has to write a project proposal. The proposal briefly explains the objective or objectives of the production and the major 
aspects of presentation techniques and the production style. It should include this information. Due to TV's small screen size, short titles work better. This is a brief but clear explanation of the underlying message and what the production is to accomplish. It is that section of the audience for whom the production has specially been designed, be it senior citizens, teenagers, homemakers, people wanting to buy a house or a car, etc., etc. A properly formulated program objective will provide a clue as to who the target audience is. In order for the program to be successful, you must keep in mind throughout each production phase the needs, the interests, and the general background of the target audience. In order for your program to have value and a lasting effect, it must in some way affect the audience emotionally. This assumes knowledge of both the prime objective of the program and of the target audience. And it ends up being a key to your professional success. Whether it will be a film, a 13-part series, a 365-episode soap opera, a game or a reality show, a documentary or a corporate video. A brief paragraph to describe each activity sequence, the key production factors, unusual production techniques such as a multiple or a single camera studio production, an EFP or a single camera film style shoot, outdoor location considerations, recreation of a period setting or environment, stunt acts, etc. need to be highlighted together with the requirements of star cast, special costumes, props and scenery. An approximate timeline, that is, the time that will be taken to complete various tasks of the project in time and the budget for it should be prepared carefully and realistically. Too much or too little of either can discourage a client and a miscalculation can result in a loss to the producer. The proposal writer must be aware of how the finished production will be distributed such as on film, videotape or converted to digital format on tape DVD, mobile application, etc., etc., and how it will be released through broadcast, cable cast, through cable operators, webcast, etc. Many financial backers want a show or program treatment. A treatment is a narrative description of the production. In other words, it is like an executive summary of the detailed and lengthy script. It should be written in such a manner that a reader can imagine exactly how the events in the story will unfold. The style of treatment for an instructional program, uh, say on drunken driving, should be vastly different from that of a comedy or a wildlife documentary. Some of the more elaborate treatments include storyboard illustrations. Dialogue and production details such as the type of lighting, camera angles, voiceover, etc. should be avoided in a treatment. Do remember that treatment, as also the proposal, is a sales tool designed to get funding for the project. The financial backers generally are not media savvy people unless they are a TV channel or a film production company. As such, the style of writing a proposal or a treatment should be simple, logical and easy to understand. Depending on the financial arrangements that are made, budget and production schedules are worked out. The people who are generally involved at this stage are, these are the agencies which agree to back the project by providing finance, 
time slot on the channel or marketing and distribution facilities. What role does the lawyer, casting agent or a location manager play? Any project that involves big financial transactions, hiring of many people and equipment will require a lot of legal work to be done. Written agreements or contracts are signed with, say, the cast, anchors, crew, members, equipment suppliers, owners of locations which are to be hired for shooting, etc., etc. Moreover, copyright of a creative work has now become a major issue. While on the one hand, there is a need to protect one's own original creative work from commercial exploitation by others, on the other, there should be an equal concern about not infringing the copyright of others. A legal situation can arise if a viewer, NGO, community takes offense at some depiction, either visual or oral, and goes to court. A group of protesters can create a law and order situation by staging violent demonstrations against a film or a TV program. Recall how some feature films recently had to face opposition from a section of society in spite of their having been cleared by the Board of Film Certification, popularly known as the Censor Board, and the matter taken to court. Legal experts have now come to play a significant role in protecting the interest of a film or a big TV production. A casting agent helps to find the right cast for the project, while a location manager identifies the required suitable locations or places and secures all permissions for shooting. The development stage can last up to several months in the case of big budget films or TV serials, game and reality shows and specialized documentaries such as on wildlife. As already mentioned, the development stage is necessary only for big and complex TV productions and feature films. Routine types of TV productions get into the pre-production mode straight away. And in any case, development stage is just a precursor to the pre-production stage. Nearly all production formats and genres require pre-production work. Unless it is an impromptu shoot like the coverage of an accident or an incident that takes place in your presence and you are able to record it then and there. Some of the greatest historical moments have been recorded by photographers and cameramen who happen to be present with their equipment at the time and place when the incident occurred. Such a coverage could not have been anticipated and therefore could not have been planned in advance. But pre-production is the preparation phase of the project. Every scene, every shot, every logistical detail is planned out. While it is impossible to anticipate everything that might happen during the production, it is essential to eliminate as many variables as one can in the pre-production phase so that there will be minimum problems in the production. Moreover, careful planning done at this stage will save money, time, prevent wastage of resources and even embarrassment before your cast and crew that you have assembled to realize your creative vision. So what exactly happens in the pre-production stage? This stage includes everything one does before entering the studio or reaching the shooting location. It involves idea generation, research, scripting, hiring or selection of director, all the crew members and talents and discussions with them, arranging equipment, video and audio tapes, hand and the set properties, 
costumes, makeup designing, sets designing, and location hunting, lighting, planning, camera and talent movement, dialogue delivery, and all audio effects, writing lyrics, song recording, and booking of facilities. Once all the basic elements are in place, rehearsals can start. A simple on-location segment may involve only a quick check of talent positions so that camera movements, audio and lighting can be checked. A complex dramatic production may require many days of rehearsals. These generally start with a dry rehearsal where the talent along with key production personnel read through the script. Often script changes take place at this point. Finally, there's a dress rehearsal. Here, the talent dresses in the appropriate wardrobe, the sets are lit up, and the talent and the camera blockings are done, and each shot is framed as determined. In other words, all production elements are checked for any flaws or deviation from the planned design. This is the final opportunity for the production personnel to solve whatever production problems remain. The fundamental thing about any and every production is to understand what you want the program to deliver and to look like. Or in other words, what is it that you really want to make? Only when you know the answer will you be able to make a good program a program that the audience will understand. Once you are clear about your idea, the next stage is how to transfer this idea to the film or television image. To translate an idea effectively on screen, you need a good script. As there are many important aspects to writing an effective and meaningful script, we shall take up this topic in the next episode. For now, let us recapitulate what all we have discussed today. So, that is all we have for you today. We hope you got a glimpse of the complex creative process that television production is. Also, that it can be broken down into various stages. You were also introduced to the work profiles of key professionals involved in the production process. In the next episode, we will continue with our exploration of the pre-production stage. Till then, goodbye.